Hey up, how's it going? It's Mark, you're listening to episode 142 of the Looking Sideways Action Sports podcast. It's the show where I try and uncover the most interesting stories in action sports and other related endeavours. Thanks for listening to this one and I hope you enjoy it. If it's your first time listening, make sure you check out the full show notes for this episode and the entire back catalogue over at www.wearelookingsideways.com. So my guest this week, someone I've been trying to get on the show for a while, is Wynn Wiley, also known as Patty Gonia. Patty's an environmentalist and drag artist created by Wynn, who is your genuine internet sensation, going from zero to 300,000 followers and counting very rapidly indeed and being covered by everybody from outside to the guardian along the way it's really not difficult to see why our world can be an extremely conventional and heteronormative environment i'm talking about you know the action sports and outdoor world obviously not the real world and a striking and creatively talented communicator like patty was always going to stand out important point that one i think the one about communication certainly one of the things that stood out for me from the beginning and one of the reasons why i wanted to speak to patty on the show this effortless communication about what can be complex and at times for people challenging topics and this conversation is a really brilliant case in point identity sexuality the universalism of drag our public and hidden selves and what factor sun cream, a couple of strawberry blondes like me and Wynn favour? Yeah, there's a lot to digest in this one. I can usually tell from the initial email conversation how an episode is going to go. And this one was no exception. Patty and Jenny, big up Jenny, went out of their way to make sure we've set up for a great chat. I'm often asked how I judge these episodes. One surefire way is afterwards when I reflect on how much I enjoyed the actual experience of chatting to the guest. And I'm going to say I enjoyed this one enormously sometimes these things just unfold and leap off in different directions so quickly that i can't really keep up and this was one of those occasions very very grateful to win and patty for the generosity thoughtfulness and kindness in the way they approach this episode which i think will also come across really clearly i'll be back at the end for the usual housekeeping corner update but in the meantime here's me and win talking all things patty enjoy I'm getting, I'm getting better at explaining it all. So, um, oh, yeah. yeah. Hi. How are you anyway? I am doing good. Yeah, I've used the Zencaster thing once before and it actually worked really well. So, it was great. Yeah, I think great. it was probably like lockdown um, yep. initiated, <laughs> right? They, they sort of rushed Absolutely. it out. It's like, wow, everyone's doing a lot of podcasts. Let's get let's get that going. Cause, uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I always had a rule that I'd only do them in person because I've been doing this like four years now. And yeah. um, I always really liked the the face-to-face interaction of doing them. So I was always quite snobby about Zoom ones. Um, but obviously when, you know, 2020 happened, had to park that quite quickly. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it kind of works all right, I think. Yeah, um, hell yeah. But yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. So thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. Seriously, I, I loved listening to a few of the episodes. I actually listened to Ben Moon's episode, um, so it's interesting that you sent uh, his photo along. He's really, um, he's a really incredible human to me. I really look up to him. So, um, yeah, it was just, it's great. I think it's, um, you really have a ability to leave your fingerprints off these interviews, and I really appreciate that, and I think a lot of podcasts maybe seek to have people fit their mold rather than to let people tell their story and, and to, to listen. And I don't know, I just really appreciate it. So yeah, I don't know. I think I compare it to like the photo world. Um, I think there's a lot of documentary photographers out there who really aim to let the story unfold. And then there's a lot of like portrait photographers and advertising photographers that try to just make shit happen. And yeah, I don't know. I really appreciate that you're on the documentary side. Uh, it's really kind. Thank you. Well, it's it's funny, isn't it? Because it's like um, it's a theme that comes up a lot. It's like, and you actually mentioned it in your Kendall talk, which I watched yesterday. In fact, hell yeah. Um, but um, but you want and and 
it's funny we're straight into it but you you mentioned parking your ego and it's mm. a, it's a theme that comes up a lot in the conversations because obviously a lot of them are about creativity and obviously that's something that me mm. and ben talked about quite a lot you know like how you learn to park your ego when you try to do something creative and how actually it is difficult i think you've i think you've got to learn it right you know yeah. it's something that doesn't you know you've got that conundrum of if you're a creative and you're gonna stick your hand up and be like hey everyone listen to me i've got important thoughts that are worth sharing you know but at the same time not letting not doing that too much to affect the quality of the work is actually quite challenging right yeah i think that um i think that ego is one of the biggest enemies of advocacy of action of activism of art um and i think it's really important to know that like it doesn't mean that all ego is bad it just means you need to be really self-aware um i think i really identify as an achiever um i think it's just it's been my identity since i can remember because i like achieved to get out of my situation of being known as the faggot or just the gay at my high school and so i achieved i i turned to photography i turned to creativity to to bring my worthiness to my table. But along with that uh, came building a uh, very unhealthy and also in some ways healthy uh, ego, you know, and my ego got me out of my situation, but also my ego uh, really held me back a lot of the time. So I think it's really important to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Um, And to remind yourself that you have nothing to prove um, and everything to give when it comes to creativity. When you say it held you back, do you mean creatively Mm. as as in like it affected the quality of the work? Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I think there are so many times when I showed up and I was like, I am here. I'm here to create. I am amazing. Um, And the more I'm learning to be curious and to listen and to step back, um, that's when the best things happen slash with Patty, honestly, collaborate like everything I do is a collaboration and I love that so much. Um, there's not one thing I, I, uh, do alone. Um, it really takes, takes a team and takes people. And I love, uh, I love collaboration, um, which is extra important to be aware of your ego. So ongoing journey, I'm learning. So the, and the lessons that you learned about collaboration, creativity, and also communication, which is something we had a quick chat about over email, um, yeah. it, with your f- photography, with your career as a photographer, was that something you were consciously when 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 Patty came along and and you embarked on this different path? Was was that did you take those lessons that you learned consciously into this this new um, way of, ex- of of communicating the ideas that you've got? Was that like a conscious thing? Yeah, I think very much so. Um... I think Patty would be on a completely different course if I didn't uh, cut my teeth uh, for 10 years as a photographer before um, and really see very much behind the scenes uh, what the world was like of of uh, being a voice or being a human uh, out there in the world. And I'm really thankful for that experience. Um, I think it set me up for, I don't want to say success, but I think it set me up to make moves that feel right to my gut rather than what I think I need to do to keep up with everyone else. Um, And to really realize that it's really important to know what you stand for and what you believe. And um, I think there are, it's a very natural human instinct to want to blend in and to want to uh, like assimilate in a lot of ways. And I think I'm really trying to remind myself Uh, that like I am this beautiful peacock behind the scenes and we all are beautiful peacocks. We're all just playing the game of the drag to try to fit in with everyone else in the outdoors community or everyone else in the film festival community. It's all fucking drag. Well, I really liked that on the, on the candle thing. You know, you, it was one of the questions I was going to ask you, you you, you said, you made that point. You said like, you know, we're all, we're all in drag. We're all, Mm -hmm. we're all wearing masks, Mm -hmm. you know, we're all presenting faces to the world, which is obviously so true. And I really liked that post on Instagram to Candace Owens. Is that how you say it? Like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously that whole Harry Styles thing. I mean, whatever, you know, that's obviously just yeah like a grift isn't it let's be honest like a right-wing grift that's going on but um i really liked that response you know the the 
because it's it's obviously true you know everybody is presenting masks but drag i mean inverting the commas for people that are listening are uh you know is obviously just a, the, a very overt and visible form of that mask wearing that we do all um take part in mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's it's an obvious point but you don't really hear it that often because we're so used to dissembling aren't we we're so used to mm-hmm. to sort of like putting this front on yeah i uh before i did drag i think i always looked at drag queens or people that did drag as an art form and i was like oh i I don't want to ever do that. I I can be a queer person or a gay person that doesn't need to be that overtly like gay to get attention or to do this or that. But now that I do drag full time, I'm realizing I've been doing drag my whole entire life. For me, my biggest form of drag has been my straight passing drag that I have learned through and through growing up in the Midwest and rural America to fit in. And so now when I go home and I am at a wedding and I'm wearing straight passing clothes and I am hanging out at that wedding, I think I'm in more drag than when I'm in full face makeup and a dress on the top of the mountain. And I think when we can all realize and be conscious of the drag that we do, no matter what it is, no matter if it's you doing corporate drag at your job or you doing drag to try to fit in at the rock climbing crag we all just want to belong and we all just want to feel included. But I really truly think that when we can embrace our uniqueness and our unique story and, um, and what makes us different than the rest of us, I think that that you being yourself is such an invitation for everyone else around you to be themselves. And I feel like we're all showing up trying to all be each other rather than just being our own unique selves which is an invitation for everyone else to just show up and be themselves, you know? So. I, yeah. And, and, and one of the things I was going to ask you about that is, has, has the, the, obviously Patty's struck such a chord, you know, I mean, you don't need me to tell you that, but do you think it's, it's that part of, of this that you've just touched upon that, that is partly responsible for the, for the impact and, and the way that people have responded this, this idea that, that you just outlined and well, that's the first part of the question. The yeah. second part of the question would be, are you surprised by that? Um, I think there's a little baby drag queen inside us all. Um, I think, I <laughs> hey, think look at the task. Yeah, I think there's a, <laughs> I think there is a, um, I think there's a freak inside of us. Um, I think there, I think uh, we are not one identity. We are so intersectional. We are so weird when it comes down to it. Um, so I think that does resonate with people. Um, and am I surprised by it? Uh, yes, and the fact that like I'm surprised that I am like uh, I don't know. Hmm. How do I put this? And am I surprised? I would say in a lot of ways, yes. In a lot of ways, no. I think that, um, I think, how do I put this? Like there, I think is also queerness inside of all of us too. Um, my personal belief, and I do not mean to offend anybody, uh, but is that like sexuality is completely a spectrum and I don't even know if straightness exists. I think that everyone exists on a spectrum from more straight leaning to definitely queer. Um, and I think that like queerness and just weirdness and strangeness and uniqueness is something that we should celebrate no matter what, you know? Um, so yeah, I think I, I'm in a lot of ways, I'm like not surprised at all because I think that like everyone's queer, everyone's a little queer in some way or another. It might not be well, sexuality all... wise, but I think everyone's queer. Well, we're all living two lives, aren't we? You know, there's, yeah. the, there's a lot, there's the life that is the real you that you essentially mm-hmm hide from the world and then there's the Mm -hmm. life that you present to the world and the gap between those two lives is often extremely well i would say it's always extremely wide and the the public face that you especially in very like heteronormative context is is so narrow like Mm -hmm. you know you and and this kind of leads us quite interestingly to the outdoors doesn't it you know like that way of experiencing that experience for example is is traditionally quite narrow 
Mm. And, you know, I think this, I, I recognize what you're saying because there's, there's a, there's a very interesting tension there, isn't there? Between these two faces that you have and, and, and the ones that we portray. And obviously it's kind of cod psychology 101, but that that's often, you, you know, at the root of like much homophobia, racism, it's fair, isn't it? It's fair about what it might reveal about yourself if you if you looked too deeply let's say yeah i uh i think we're all having a sort of awakening this year or at least i i hope we are like i hate what's going on in the world right now but i think for the first time in a long time we're taking an honest look at ourselves in the mirror and i think we're realizing that we all have a lot of work to do um i think we're all realizing we have a lot of potential I think we're all realizing that we are different people when we don't have to show up in front of other people all the time and perform and be. Um, That's certainly true. Yeah. I think that uh, like also to your point about like the outdoors, I mean, I am just permanently fucking fascinated at how I look at every single outdoor brand advertisement or outdoor film uh, that like makes it to like the main, main stage And what I, what I see is not what I see when I go outside and experience the outdoors. When I'm on the trail, I'm seeing people who look incredibly not like those heteronormative white straight cis uh, norms we see. Um, I see, I see color. I see queer people. Um, I think queer people have been in the outdoors for forever. Uh, No one's just taking the time to notice. I see I see people having fun and I see a lot more femininity um, out there, but I think that masculinity is so easy to, to sell as something that's desirable. I mean, what 20 year old dude that's getting into the outdoors doesn't want to be even more masculine and even more cool and butch. And I just, I think that that is so silly when we are all playing around in mother nature's uh, house. And I think that, femininity is so important and it's just so important to just have fucking fun you know like why are we not just having more fun why does it have to be so serious um i think there's also that drag too of just uh this over serious it we must accomplish this and do that and i'm just like give me a sheet of alpine ice and i just want to like go skate on it and be a little queer fairy and and that's my happy place and i think that's a lot more people's happy place than they probably want to admit yeah, well, when you're a kid, that's what it is, isn't it? You know, that, yeah. that pure joy of expression, often physical expression, you know, and the, and the, and the you know, the joyous sense of fun that that gives you. But at some point, it becomes co-opted by mm. identity, doesn't it? And as you've talked about or mentioned there, like often it is a very masculine identity. And mm. I had a really interesting conversation last year with a surf photographer, a girl called Sachi, who photographs like Mavericks and, um, you know, Jaws, like big wave surfing. And she was really interesting. She said, well, big wave surfing is like, it's the last bastion of the American frontier. It's a, it's the ultimate boys club. You know, it's, mm. it's like, it's essentially like one of the last places that manly men can express themselves yeah. in, in Marlboro man, um, you know, iconography and in that way, and it and it be acceptable yeah. whereas you know and it's it, it's an interesting point isn't it because it does you know the again a theme that often comes up in my conversations with people is there's a contradiction in that because it's sold as the universal inclusive fun dream mm. but often kind of isn't really mm. you know there's that the, there is like you say especially look through it like the lens i'm talking about through the lens of brand and industry as you just said, it's, it's, it's still pretty narrow, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that's why I think I've come to the conclusion that like, I am here to support and be a part of the outdoor community. And I'm very thankful, uh, for the outdoor industry support and the ways that it has stepped up to support, um, not only me, but uh, but different communities in the outdoors. I think we're really going through a moment where that actually is genuinely starting to happen. I think we have a fuck long way to go, but <laughs> I'm not waiting for the outdoor industry to solve my problems anymore. I'm out there creating the community that I want to see. I'm out there encouraging the other people that are building other incredible communities. 
rooting them on, um, like fundraising, like I'm just, I, I'm not waiting anymore for anyone to solve my problems. And I think that like, that's not like a hair flip I'm doing that I'm like, I'm amazing. I'm better than dot, dot, dot. It's just like, no, if, if I see something that I want change in the world, why not go and do it myself, you know? And I understand that like, I can often get misunderstood as someone who wants to come in and just center themselves and just like do this and do that and be like on this like high horse. And it's like, well, if you actually meet me, you'll realize that's the antithesis. I'm just like passionate about getting shit done. And I'm not waiting for anyone else to solve my problems. I'm an independent woman who don't need no man, you know? As in, as in the narcissism accusation, as in the whole, mm. the, is that what, is that what you mean? Like the kind of, like the, yeah. the sort of like, like when you, when you mention that perception that you often get thrown at you as in, oh, well, this is just a, an act of supreme narcissism, which mm -hmm. is about you as a, as a person. Is that, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but is that what you mean? Yeah. That plus like just, just people who just look at the, what I do and the, the work that I do and, um, choose not to see it as performance art or as just art and um, in general, but see it as like something that is trying to like distract from the experience of the outdoors or be a circus act or just be a flaming liberal or like whatever. And I'm just like, I have no time for people who are like haters either. And that's what easier said than done. Cause it does constantly get to me. I get to everyone, but, but I'm really realizing that like at the end of the day, like I'm going to be, happy that I went after what I went after um, and, and just, and did it. Um, it. Like, what is the point in being held back by people? Cause there's always going to be people that are going to judge you. You know, like I learned that experience when I came out of the closet um, and what I wish I would have known then that I know now is that like the only people I need in my life are the people I'm linked arms with now. But I think it's really scary to do that. Cause it's really, um, we face a lot of hate for being ourselves these days because no one likes to see people be happy so yeah and also it's just classic reductive stay mm -hmm. in your lane sort of mm -hmm. chat isn't it you know yeah. um, whereas like there's there's many faces of acceptable narcissism mm -hmm. around socially which perhaps don't get the same criticism yeah. really yeah. um yeah but that must be hard to well I don't want to use the word brave because it's a, it's a very cliched word, but you know, in our industry, which, which is, which, you know, we, we've established, I think that we both kind of think it can be very conventional and very traditional in the way that mm -hmm. ideas are communicated and, and people have roles um, mm -hmm. to like Pat, Patty's definitely shown people a different way of um, mm -hmm. experiencing the outdoors. And, and I, I guess the question I would have is, have you seen a change in those attitudes, especially with the industry? Cause you mentioned, you know, you do work with brands, which I'm sure we'll get to in more detail. Cause I've also got another question about that, that I wanted to ask you. Um, do you, are you seeing, um, people understand it more or, 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 you know, their attitudes changing as they, as they understand, like you say, what it's actually about and what you're trying to express and communicate with it. Mm. Listen, I want to be really honest with you. Um, my success in this industry and in this community, I truly believe is because one, I, I, I give a shit, but two, I am and do become this weird queer ass butterfly that can really challenge people or that can show people things. But out of drag, I'm a straight passing and white and privileged as any other dude bro in the outdoor industry and i i definitely think that that has uh, something to do with it and if anything i hope that like i can be a window or like a little bit of a bridge i guess between like a person's kind of old world and this like new beautiful like actual world that's over here of diversity yeah. in every way um, I, I see myself in my role as a, a connector in that way. And as, as someone that is, uh, yeah, I, I am fully aware that my drag is for allies mostly. And I, I design it that way. Um, I, I kind of design my whole internet presence around the ebb and flow between this, like incredibly straight passing, just human being, cause I am, but yet also, I also 
am all of that other stuff. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I just like, it kind of, you know, in a weird way, like, I love that we're talking about the outdoor industry and brands, but I'm almost just like, why do we as people in the outdoors, like keep on talking about it? Like they are some like supreme superpower because yes, they do make gear that enables us to go do the things we want to do, but also like, why are we so like focused on like them and that? And I get that it's because there's a lot on the line. I get because there's a lot of room that needs to grow, but I'm just like, I want them to come knocking on our doors because we're the people doing like the shit, you know? And I mean, no disrespect. I just mean, I think we have this power structure in our minds that it's like brands at the top of this pyramid. And it's just like, I know no other community that like bows to the powers that be as much as the outdoor industry. Like not even the photo industry does that. Like photo brands, like Sony, Canon, like Nikon will come to photographers and be like, Hey, like we really need you in order to to survive. And I feel like that moment is finally happening in the outdoor space where brands realize at the end of the day, like my community is 150 times more active, uh, not just on social, but like in real life than like their community, you know? And I think they're really looking for guidance and I am not going to sit here and bash on brands because I think we all need to motherfucking work together. And I think there's a lot of opportunity that can be had. Um, I just think that like, I'm kind of like sick and tired of like this framework that we build in the outdoor industry that it's just like, oh, black diamond. Oh, Aria. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what, why? Why? Well, I guess, you know? I guess they're, they're the gatekeepers, aren't they? You know, they're the, gate, they're the yeah. gatekeepers to a, to a particular mm. way of communicating the experience. And, and, yeah. and I guess, I guess why I'm interested in your relationship with it is because you've upended the way that people with influence Mm. like interact with those gatekeepers. Like clearly, Mm. you know, like there's, there's a traditional path. Yeah. And, and again, it's not really about the brands. It's about, for me, it's about communication. It's about like Mm. how you've used the mechanism that's in place to, to, get your message across Mm. in a way that is on your own terms like they they have they've done what you're talking about like they they have had to do do it your way Mm. um and that i i guess from from my what what i'm interested in is like the the, that that part of it because i agree like the the the, the, again it's the gap isn't it the yeah they're, they're not the the industry isn't isn't the activity and it isn't the people that do the activity and the media isn't the activity and you know it's it's like when you it's like people who aren't on twitter isn't it you know and they're like just don't 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 have a fucking clue what everyone's arguing about you know it's just like what who fucking cares just go outside (laughs) you know like and 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 i totally get that but you definitely have like i say use the mechanisms that are in place in a way that is effective activism basically you know mm-hmm. which is which is interesting thank you for saying that i i really appreciate that i feel like uh to be honest and this is not me having a humble moment but like i stand on the shoulders of greats um people that have really paved the way um for me to be where i am um i don't deserve uh credit i feel like i feel like everyone who collaborates with me and that is a part of my community deserves credit because like I'm just me and I'm just this human, this, this weird human living my life. And like, do I totally know brand strategy? Yes. Cause that was my life for 10 years, but also like, I know human community, um, or I know the lack thereof and I know how important it is. Um, and I think there's magic to like actually being like, okay, what does it look like to not think of your followers as followers, but as community members? Like, what does it look like to value their voices? What does it look like to, to try to serve those people? And I don't mean it in this way of like, and let me build a new outdoors. I just mean like, why the fuck not? You know, like yeah. why not actually do it? Like it feels better to my bones, like to think of people as people rather than just like numbers or followers. Like I, I don't, uh, yeah, I like to give people a lot more credit than that. So I just, yeah, I don't know. I think that's what I'm excited about. It's just like, what can we do together? You know, because I'd be, 
I wouldn't be nothing without my community, but it would be a lot less special to me. Um, like when I think of Patty, it's synonymous not only with my drag and this incredibly personal journey, but also this community that we've made. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just like, it's, and it's not me here being like, and I want to see more of what I'm doing in the outdoors. Cause I'm right. I just want to see more people like doing what they do. You know, like I think at the end of the day, it's all about asking yourself the question, like, what is the work that's available to you and only to you and chase the fucking shit out of that. You know, no matter what that is, if that's environmental work, awesome. You have relationships to your family who might be completely conservative. That is something that other people don't have. That's unique to you and only to you. So do that work. You are a skier who comes at skiing with a disability and wants to build community for other people with disabilities, but like hyper locally in your community on your local mountain, fucking go do that shit. Like, I think we just need more people doing the work that's available to them and only to them because like, what is there but that in this world? Um, So for me, like Patty is the work that's available to me and only to me. For you, maybe this podcast and maybe it's 10 million more creative tentacles. Um, I feel like some beauty some beauty lies at the other end of that question or at, at when we know the answers to that question. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, you've, you've, you've answered, cause I did put some listener questions up on Instagram and that was a really, cool. that was a really common. That was, that was a really common one. It was, yeah. Well, it was, there was that question, but there was also like the allyship question. Like how, how can, you know, how can people in this world mm. be, be better allies? That was a, mm. a very common one, which is one you must, uh, you must get a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm eating breakfast. That's all right. Give me a long second. <laughs> no, no, no rules on this show. Love it. Hold on, I'll swallow. And then we can move on. <laughs> Wait, what you got? I got a really incredible original breakfast of eggs and toast. Nice. I don't cut anything, by the way. This is going in. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Um. I love it. I love it. Serving the real real. Um, okay. So yeah, allyship, like what a thing, right? I mean, I mean, listen, like I want to preface with, I think that I spent, I spent 10 years of my life out of the closet, uh, not knowing at all what was right in my hand already or right inside of me already. Um, that were amazing tools that I could use to be an ally. So if anything, for y'all listening to this, you're not learning from someone who's an expert at this. You're learning from someone who like was real shitty at this for really long. And I think has uh, hit a very fast learning curve um, and learning from like a lot of people that I really look up to. But I think at the base of allyship, it's just like, it is the golden rule, like do unto others as you would do unto you. But I think also, um, the word ally and being labeled an ally, it doesn't exist to me. Um, allyship exists to me. And what I mean by that is that like the word ally is a verb. It's not a noun. It requires action. I just like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know how to describe this in like a step-by-step process that uh, like, I don't have a preset like number of things like set up, but I think if you can ask yourself, okay, like, who are you and what are your identities and what makes you unique Two, what talents do you have? Three, what are you passionate about? Like, what are you really passionate about advocating for? And like four, what are some ways you can challenge yourself in new ways to be passionate about things or like communities and people? And if you can intersect all those circles, like at that middle will be absolute magic. Like I never realized how much a camera in my hand could be a tool for allyship. I never realized how important my voice was and how, how I can always use my voice. Um, I didn't realize that like I had a lot more ways to impact and give than just by like giving $5 like here and there. Like, yes, that's great. Yes, we should support organizations, but you know, maybe you're an amazing graphic designer and you really want to offer your services to nonprofits in the outdoor industry that you think are doing really incredible things. That's such an amazing thing that's work that's available to you and only to you uh you know so i think that we just need we need to realize that like allyship literally is actually very fucking fun and 
um, and can be really beautiful. And I don't just mean that we just need a bunch of people like uh, flooding around, like making art for different things. I mean, we really do need action and we need our voices raised too. Um, but I think that often when people hear allyship, it's immediately this like doom space of like, okay, we must be serious and we must be intentional and we must, I am an ally. And it's like, it's like, no, I think some of the most beautiful ways you can ally is when you just bring your full humanity and full stuff to the table. Um, and just be like, Hey, I'm here. Like what work can I do? So yeah, you know, that's allyship to me. The thought just struck me when we were, when we were talking then, um, because you mentioned earlier the fact that you, you know you mentioned that your straight passing identity, let's say, mm. that is how you how you phrased it when you were younger, and it sounded like that was that. T- and well, I, I'm going to ask you as a question: Did yeah, how yeah. long did it how long did it take you to realize that was what you were doing, like mm. that you that you that you were wearing that mask? Hmm. Which is kind of leading to the next thing I want to ask you about. Yeah. You, you, you understand what I mean, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's a great question. Um, I think I was, I've been aware of it my whole entire life. Um, I think that, uh, I think I most closely used to relate to like a chameleon and that like I could change who I was in order to give people the best opportunity to show up and be themselves like i thought that was the perfect recipe i think that i thought that was the biggest way i could serve people would be to not be super overtly gay because then that took up too much space and i could just like be me and i could be that gay person that people would meet and be like oh my gosh he's gay like i had no idea like that's really cool and i thought that that was somehow superior fucking lies Uh, but i think i always i think i always knew that i was uh putting on the straight drag, especially because like growing up in Nebraska, even though I grew up in a suburb and I grew up in a, in a liberal town in the middle of a very red state, um, it still wasn't safe for me to be who I was or it wasn't encouraged. I didn't, uh, I didn't succeed by being who I really was. I succeeded by being everything that I wasn't. And so it really took myself putting myself in an environment where I could succeed and thrive by being the most diverse me. You know, um, I think that, uh, that was really like important. And so I don't know, so much is like turning in my head. I'm like, this is like an amazing therapy session reflection back to my childhood. (laughs) But but I think that like, you know, at the end of the day, like, um, I think it's no surprise to people that know me, um, when they look and see that Patty happened, because I think it was, it was the finally in my life that I so needed. It was the finally, I can be who I really am. Finally, I can put myself in an environment and plant myself in different soil where I can thrive. Finally, I can take more time for myself rather than just like working and working and working. Finally, I can really tap into who I am rather than just like achieving and achieving and achieving. And of course, like here we are where I like keep on trying to achieve with Patty because like I am who I am at the end of the day, but I think I'm doing it in a lot more healthy ways. Um, and, and I want that for everyone, you know, I think if, if we all take a step back, we can really realize how many things in our life we're doing for other people uh, rather than for ourselves and how we often think we're telling ourselves the story that like we have the dream job or we have the dream life when really we're completely fucking miserable. Like I was a very successful photographer. I like had amazing friends. I was traveling all the time and I was completely empty. So I'm happy to be pursuing a little bit more fullness uh, nowadays. Well, that never ends, that just, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It never ends. It never ends. So, and I, I think that Patty, honestly, at the end of the day, will just be another step. I think in another few years, it's going to be something completely different. Um, I can already feel that I'm not growing Patty seems. So who knows? Well, it's, it sounds like, you know, I'm a big believer in the right idea at the right time, whether yeah. that's creatively or personally totally. and it, sound, totally. it sounds like it sounds like patty's that for you well this 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 yeah. kind of well i mean maybe maybe I, it, it, do, you, do you think that yeah i think um patty is really right now um the side of me that is patty means so much to me um and it's so worth exploring and i think that in other points of life other things will be really worth exploring and really 
needed to explore. Um, yeah, I think that we we oftentimes find ourselves in a box and then leave that box to find this world we think is this gorgeous, new, limitless world. And in fact, it's just a smaller box. So <laughs> I think that... Yeah, uh, very, very true. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so who knows? Just figuring it out. Yeah, well, that that does lead me to where I was sort of going with this, which is how difficult is it to sort of balance that internally with this you know um hey please be a spokesperson about all these issues that that Mm. you're now suddenly a figurehead for you know yeah like and and i've i've kind of done it in this interview to be honest there's been a bit like so tell me about this and tell me about that Mm. and you know i did i did a lot of um research ahead of this and and that's obviously quite a theme you know like Mm. so you know so so i i I, um and when and when we were chatting i was like fuck i'm i'm doing it as well so Mm. i guess i guess my question is how do you balance that with the internal um i'm going to use the word journey as Mm. much as i hate it Mm -hmm. um i've I've done that i've done that i've done that that a few times recently kind of used the word journey and and then done the caveat (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i love it you listen so back next, and you're like am i really that basic of a bitch and you're like yeah i guess i am that basic of a bitch i'm it's just great. gonna use the word jit i'm just gonna use the word journey it's great. It's um, great. but uh yeah you know what i'm saying like to to be to be sort of going through this process and mm. like not an unusual process as we're saying everyone goes through that process and you also yeah. made a really salient point earlier that everyone's particularly been going through that process in 2020 mm-hmm. um with also suddenly having to publicly have opinions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, like, I don't like to speak for uh, a whole entire community because like there, there are not monoliths, like monoliths are lies. Like I, I am the last person that people should be asking about uh, for like, uh, expert opinions on queerness in the outdoors because I re- I try to recognize my privilege and I also try to recognize like there are a lot more people that face a lot different and a lot more hate for being who they are like at the end of the day like I can wipe my makeup off I can put on clothes like I'm wearing right now and I'm safer because of that um there are so many of my friends who are trans, who are people of color and queer, where the outdoors is an incredibly dangerous place for them and a place where they incredibly do not feel included. And like, I, I am not here to sit here and be like, and it's all okay now because like Patty is in a few outdoor ads, like fuck that. There is so <laughs> much, there's so, there's so much work to do. And I think that like, again, I just hope that I can be like a window or even just like a little like flag waver to be like, shit's not okay. You know, like that, that's what I'm here to do. Um, and like, honestly, I just love being a connector to like other people. Like I love passing the mic to other people that like other people would never know are out there. Um, even if it's just through like the digital, like social media world, but I hope to again, someday very soon, like build that community again in person. Um, And like when we do hiking tours, it's not about people hiking with me. Like it's not about even the hike. It's about like the incredible guest speakers that we get to bring that people get to learn from on different topics. So I don't know. There feels like a really beautiful like bait and switch to Patty too um, that I love. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned community and Mm -hmm. like you say, you've, it's really clear that you've been really careful to use your platform to, to build others up, like you say, and to make sure that people can find out about these other you know people of interest topics of interest yeah things that they think might not perhaps get a look in you know normally yeah yeah for sure um i think that uh yeah people really need community nowadays more than ever i know i do um and i really feel like uh at the end of the day like i am just fucking amazed by the people that like make up my community. Like we have queer, like native biologists that are like throwing knowledge in my DMs about things I would never know about all the way to like 
a 13 year old kid who just came out as trans. And I will hopefully, if summer camp can happen next summer, like be their summer camp counselor at Brave Trails, um, which is the summer camp I volunteer with. So yeah, people are fucking amazing. And I also like, I don't know, like if I'm being really fucking real with you, and this is like a side topic, but I want to share this. As much as you were describing earlier that the brands are the gatekeepers, I find that there are so many gatekeepers to allyship and to um, gaining ally support. What I mean by that is there are so many people that I see that are activists and voices um, who say, do this, don't do that. Actually, yeah, don't do that too. No, this is wrong. I'm ashamed of you. Like you should be ashamed of yourself. Call out culture, cancel culture. And I want to give space for that because it is not my place to police anyone else. Um, they do them, but I do me and I do it very differently. And I am finding not because it's more comfy, but because people can just feel community around it, that a lot more people are showing up to this door than that other door. Um, I think it's really interesting and I will speak for my own experience, how much uh, marginalized communities create the same amount of policing that they've found policing like their own like selves in their lives and how much they just repeat that cycle. And that's called oppression. And that's also called like lateral oppression. And that's a really interesting statement for, for me to make because I am not interesting. That is a, maybe a, uh, how do I put this? I'm treading in interesting waters right now. I feel like it is a very, uh, it's a statement that if I was more diverse than I am, I'd listen to you and be like, well, that's just like a privileged white bitch. And I would say, um, I would say again, I am not here to tell anyone else how to do it. And I know that there are a lot of um, people out there that are outraged in their own ways. And I'm outraged in my own way, but I just want people to feel at least community around it and just an openness for their in progress because I'm an incredibly in progress person too, because I'm not perfect. I don't have it figured out. And I want to like be in community with, with those people. So maybe I am creating an environment that like is safe and coddles people. Um, I will always get that critique. Maybe I will be a person that uh, says that like allyship can be fun and it can be this beautiful thing, but I'm in it for like the long haul. And I think shame and fear never worked as motivators. And that's the playbook that like we've tried to use in the past for allyship and even for allyship to our planet with our climate. And that playbook is not working. We need a new playbook. Um, so this is me saying, why not try this? Because I think we have to try something new. I, I understand what you're saying, because that, yeah. that playbook, as you describe it, can be very easily flipped yeah. and yeah. can be very can be very easily. Yeah. For, for, for however right you might feel yeah. um, to employ that over a certain issue. Yeah you can also very quickly find yourself on the receiving end of that, um, you know, ideologically mm -hmm. from another direction mm -hmm. and suddenly you've got a circular, not very yeah. constructive di dialogue yeah. going on. And yeah. I, I understand what you mean by that. You know, that, yeah. that's a very, that, that, you know, I kind of think that's territory the whole world is currently grappling with, isn't right. it really? You know, like, right. the, like how you, you know, fuck, like, from people that are like cancel culture doesn't exist to like cancel culture does exist how do we how do we deal with it you know like whether it wh yeah. where the line of about freedom of speech is you know they're all the, the, such nuanced things these topics totally. are they and totally. they're, they're very new they're not they're not something that anyone can have a definitive answer on or Absolutely. really f have confidence in making definitive statements about i don't think it was another it was another yeah. thing actually that, that listeners asked me to ask you about um cancel culture hmm. and yeah your take on it so you've you've you know yeah that, 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 i i really empathize with the view you've put forward there because yeah i think i think you know if i look at my own politics and my own background it won't surprise you i'm sure to learn i'm very liberal very mm -hmm. left-wing mm -hmm. and my instinctive reaction to overly um, what I perceive to be uh, views I disagree with, let's just mm. put it that way, can mm. be to react like that, can be to, mm. to take that puritanical, priggish, 
um, mm. response. And like yeah. you say, you see that you see that play out every single second on social media, yeah. and you do wonder where it's kind of leading us, really. Totally. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I I grew up in Nebraska and like cattle country and like corn America, and I often uh, see while it might be um, out of a voting booth, uh, how do I put this? I often see that like the other side actually has a lot more of the qualities and community that like I desire um, in that like there, I do see like love and acceptance and, and like uh, also this like, this humbleness that I feel like uh, the liberal side of the world does not have and this sense of community. And I think it's so interesting because it's not like I'm here saying like Republicans are the answer. Like the other side's the answer. I I'm saying, I know the reality that when a lot of those people go to the voting booth, they will never vote for my equal rights a day in their lives. And that's the issue that I'm lying with is that duality. But I'm realizing like (sighs) there are bad people, but like, there we are not uh yeah we we carry so much in ourselves and i think we all have um we all have a side of ourselves that wants to be cancel culturally we all have a side of ourselves that wants to like judge and hate because those things are easier to go to because it's really easy to protect ourselves and to feel better than to feel safe and i'm fascinated with that psychology and i think that exists for all humans no matter where they lie politically or no matter how much they like are involved in the internet or not or in like community or not. Um, I think, you know, we all love the hot gossip. We all love to hear like, oh, <laughs> and, did you, and did you hear about this? Because have it's like- read, sorry, sorry to interrupt you very quickly, but have you read Sapiens? Yeah. I have read Sapiens, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. my favorite bit in that book where yeah. he's basically yeah. like, the invention of gossip was, mm. uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm the, I'm the fucking worst gossip I know. I mean, wow, well, this podcast is essentially a vehicle for gossip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's so true. And like, so here's the thing. I think that like, I just want to do what I can do, which is to reflect in myself and be like, oh, there is like a shady bitch inside of me too. And I'm not better than, um, I'm just trying to navigate the world and like, okay, what are ways that I can cause the least amount of harm? Because I know that I don't like harm when it's caused to myself, you know? And do I succeed at that? Maybe sometimes. Do I fail at that? For fucking sure. So I don't know. I think I just come at it with like a realist perspective. Like I, I don't think that advocacy or activism makes you any better of a human um i think if anything it requires a lot of accountability um, and i think it re- really requires you to slot yourself in the space of like being a lifelong learner um knowing that you there's a lot more you don't know than you do know um yeah i don't know i'm just like trying to figure it out just like the rest of us i think that like it's really interesting how behind the scenes to use a very British reference, we are all just muggles instead of wizards. <laughs> but we all think that we yeah, are it's wizards. That, it's that dual, it's that dual identity thing again, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You you mentioned that you think you, you said something like, "Oh, I'll get in hot water." Another very British phrase. There you go. Um, mm. Like, as in, you think people will be surprised to hear you have that take on this issue. Um, as in, I'm very aware. I, I'm trying to be uh, as aware as I can be about like the duality that I carry of being a marginalized person and also carrying extreme privilege. For example, there are a lot of people that even like in the in the left in other marginalized communities will be like, oh, well, that's just an angry black person. No, it's not. They have their complete life story that's completely different than my own lived experience. And who am I to tell them like how to act or how to do or or, or how to go about carrying out like how they feel. Um, so I'm not here to critique that. I'm just saying that like at the, at my core root of it, like that's not necessarily like how I go about it. So I'm not, I don't have a problem with cancel culture. I have a problem when cancel culture is weaponized. Um, and when cancel culture is laid as a trump card by, you know, one marginalized community to laterally oppress another, you know, and that's just my own lived yeah. experience. But I mean, listen, like to be straight up with you, I feel like hmm what's my truth in this i feel like there's a lot of people that think that 
the diversity, equity, and inclusion community in the outdoors is this is this new thing at the top? Is this new like, wow, these people are so woke and know so much behind the scenes? They are the cattiest bitches I know. And <laughs> and that's that's my lived experience. Um it is it is the most exclusive gatekeeped club there is where I feel like there a, a lot of people are leading with their ego and and I'm no better than than that that's just my observation so I think we need people really asking themselves like what are they doing what are they doing this work for are they doing this work for their ego to build a following to to uh to be right to be more righteous than or are they are they building it to be curious and to grow and to uh and to be like, you know what? Like, I have a lot of shit to learn too, but like, this is what I believe. So again, though, like that's, that's the way that I go about doing my life. And I'm glad there, there is enough space for other people to do their own thing too. I'm just so realizing it's, it's really, maybe not for me. It's really fascinating, isn't it? Cause yeah, it's, again, it's an identity thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, are you doing it because you essentially want to be in yet another club which is essentially mm-hmm. similar to the to the one that you might purport to stand mm-hmm. against, mm-hmm. or is it exactly. or is there, or is there actually a point to it? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. fascinating. Yeah, I mean, like, and I think it's applicable to any community. It's not just the diversity community in the outdoors. I think this is like every different niche outdoor community's world, whether it's like the ski world or the mountain biking world or the climbing world or the backpacking world, like. Be careful who you give your power to. Um, you know, I think there's there's a lot of people that don't realize that like the only reason why people have power in a way is because like people are a part of their community or follow them. And I'm just like, be careful who you give your power to. Like, be careful who you follow. Be careful who you listen to as like the experts. Like, maybe maybe it's really unhealthy. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing for time? I'm good. We can go. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, going. Sh- I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure really because uh, yeah, no, you're you're, that's a pretty, it's a pretty tight ship you're running over there. Is, is with uh, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just interested if you because you've obviously yeah. got people like helping you. Is that is that mm. just because it's kind of blown up so much in the last in the last year or so? Mm. I, was like, uh, I want a Jenny. How do I how do I get a Jenny? Yeah, right, 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 right. No, Jenny is Jenny's incredible. Um. <sighs> Uh, what I knew when I started out Patty and when it kind of initially blew up was that like, I did not want this to be um, a solo journey. I lived 10 years of that as a photographer where I was, I was a photographer. I was like my bookkeeper. I was my booking agent. I was an art director. Like I was all these things and it was a really lonely life. Um, and I wanted community. And so I'm really thankful for like a core team of people that I get to work with and create with. And yeah, the world that people would not know behind the scenes with Patty is that, I mean, it's a complete production company. I mean, when we pop off events, we're producing them. When we pop off films, we're producing them. Um, do we collaborate with other incredible people? Absolutely, yes. Like every photographer I work with, videographer I work with, designer I work with. Um, but it is a very, very small, agile team of people who just give a shit about making impact in community and yeah, Jenny is one of those people. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a team effort for sure. I'm really interested in in the creative inspiration behind Patty as well, because obviously, mm-hmm. you know, you just mentioned the production and the, it's the, the creativity behind it is really impressive and really amazing. I'm, and I'm assuming when you, because um, I've read the story about like where the original idea came from and how you uh, originally developed it, but I'm imagining when you kind of when it dawned on you the scope and the potential, you you were you must have been like, "Fuck, this could mm-hmm. be this could be epic," you know, like mm-hmm. and and I'm and I'm imagining it was quite an opportunity to to put quite a few creative ideas into practice. Was was that something that you had? You know, it was a bit like right, you know. I guess like inspirations, ideas that came behind it. Is that, is that anything mm. that you've, is that ha- kind of how it went? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do I say? Uh, I feel like at the end of the day, what people don't know is that like drags 
original purpose and journey was activism and was advocacy. So if anything, I feel like I'm trying to bring it back to its roots. Um, Drag was literally a political art form that like covertly threw so much of what people thought about society and the world out the window. Um, Drag queens were the creators of so many of the first LGBTQ marches for equality. Um, Drag was originated also out of an incredible like black and POC cultural background um, that was kind of birthed out of New York City. And, um, and I really look up to those originators of the art form of drag um, as, again, like the shoulders that I, what's the phrase, the shoulders I stand on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I stand on the shoulders of great. So I think that like, really it's like, it makes a lot of sense to me when I think about Patty's drag as an art form, because it's like, it is activism. It is advocacy. It is, it's so human, but it's also so like just a gender fuck and just like a complete, just put it out there um, and, and do it for a purpose. Like, don't just wear an outfit, like wear something with a purpose, wear something with a story, um, give a shit. Um, intersect what also is like your other identities in your drag. Like for me, that's me trying to give a shit about our planet um, and often failing in giving a shit about that planet and telling that story. So yeah, I, uh, I'm just about to release this dress made out of um, over a thousand pieces of trash um, and single use plastic from my time in quarantine. And I'm posting it as like a giant, hey, I have quote unquote failed. But also what I haven't done this year is I haven't been on a plane in a year. I've also reduced my consumption of a lot of other things. I've also eaten uh, way more vegetarian than I ever have in my life. Um, so it's really interesting to kind of like wear my failure, uh, but yet also to like reuse all this trash and to make it into something that that is an outfit for me now. So I don't know, just like curious about these worlds. Yeah, I mean, it really comes across like the layers of meaning and expression that are involved yeah which yeah. is kind of why I asked the, asked the question really, because um, it's clearly very, very carefully considered, like, mm -hmm. you know, the messaging that, that yeah. that's coming across. And I just imagine that must be creatively really fun to, to like be able it to is. sort of like a, approach it in that way and, and, and to try and, you know, hide as many Easter eggs and references and, yeah. and yeah. kind of ideas, ideas in there as possible. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's so fun. And I owe so much of the, the creative side to just the, the beauty and the brilliance that is like getting a few beautiful brains together and just like creatively thinking and just uh, brains exploding. Um, yeah, I, I oftentimes will bring a, a baby seed of an idea to like my really trusted, like best friends and just where our brains can take it and where it goes is really beautiful. And yeah, it is so fun. It feels like fucking fun again. Like, thank God. Like, it's the thing that's kept me going in quarantine is just like thinking and being creative and creating, even if it's like at an extreme social distance. So yeah, you got to keep on, uh, got to keep on having fun. It's, it sounds like it took you, you know, back to the, back to the journey. Um, mm -hmm. it sounds like it took you a while to, um, feel comfortable expressing yourself through drag was that was that mm -hmm. something that, that that took you a while to build up to essentially or was it mm -hmm. you know it's part of this actually i can express myself in this way now mm -hmm. it is a constant journey every time i'm getting in drag it is it doesn't feel familiar yet to look in the mirror and see myself um in drag uh and every time i do it i feel like i'm like learning something new or at least just like trying something new um yeah it, it's like it's really powerful to look in the mirror and see the other gender and it's not necessarily in many ways it brings me a lot of comfort because i'm like oh there's me like there's the other half of me that i hid for so long yeah um, and in a lot of ways it is this um it is this like wait what like what am i what am i doing who am I? Like, what is this? Like, and it makes me question a lot. Uh, but I think that's a good thing. So I think uh, some uncomfort as the outdoors can teach us is very necessary. What? Well, in what way? Like, what? Sorry to dig in quite. Yeah, no, go for it. Quite, quite, quite deep. But like, what? What are those feelings of that? 
that you're seeing that are making you uncomfortable like when you see that mm-hmm. well I, I, okay i guess another way of framing that question is like what have you what are you learning then when mm. through the process about yourself yeah um that's a great question i mean i feel like what i'm learning is that like our bodies are just like a sack of fucking flesh and that like <laughs> how how we appear gender wise is so not true to like or doesn't always line up to our like sexuality or to our yeah like i don't even know like i mean like the, i mean because you want to go there like I have an incredibly like hairy chest and like, I love it. And I love that masculine side of me. And that's not something that I ever want to like hide because that is so me. And I'm really realizing the more I do drag that like the drag I love isn't completely feminine passing drag. Um, it is the gender bend. It is the gender fuck. It is literally throwing out their masculinity and it's like highest form and femininity in its highest form. And, and I, yeah, I just think that it's like, it's, it's performance art, but it's also something so much deeper because I feel like it's like, uh, I guess I'll only speak from my experience, but like inside the gay person that is me is also this incredibly like feminine self too. Um, and I think it's like, it's interesting too, because it's like, uh, yeah, being, being queer and being gay is a really interesting thing because okay, because we're going to go there. Like, I sense this completely masculine uh, side of myself too sexually. Uh, Like, I love being dominant in so many ways. And yet I also love being submissive in so many ways. And it's oftentimes so informed by my environment. And I think that like, I just get to ask myself when I get in drag too, like, what environment am I in? And also like, I just love the social experiment that is drag. Like, I love walking around outdoor retailer with like, a thousand different brands like (laughs) trying to be like the most masculine bro flannel human out there and then being with this like fucking drag queen wearing a bra made of two fanny packs and like a dress made of a tent (laughs) like i fucking love that i'm like yeah like that sounds like fun to me like but it's so interesting because then i can walk through that same experience the next day out of drag in a flannel and like completely blend in and like no one even knows it's like me it's like this really crazy experience so yeah i don't know it's weird yeah it's like you were saying earlier like the two the, the privilege that you mentioned of being able to mm-hmm. navigate the world in in both ways but yeah i mean that's what's interesting yeah. about the the, the the exploration that, you, that you're talking about because again you know to bring about one of the things we were talking about before it's just everybody does that everybody has those you know everybody explores those things but they just don't do them publicly very often for sure oh my gosh and and yeah if we really did i think we would literally have a lot more men out there being like oh my gosh like skirts are so comfortable i mean like the fucking scottish figured this out like why can't anyone else (laughs) like you know it's just like literally (laughs) which by the way i will say that like i am scottish so it's like i'm kind of just like wearing what my people wear but well i did i did notice we were both um yeah yeah, say, yeah. Straw, strawberry blonde you know mm-hmm. so here we are here we're both, we are. Te- we're both team factor 50 let's say exactly so. <laughs> exactly so yeah i i think there's just there's so much i there's so much i used to think that like uh i mean like listen i guess it's all how you rationalize it but like i used to very much believe what people said about like oh drag in the outdoors that's such a juxtaposition but i'm like no nature is queer as fuck too and like so i'm just out there being queer as fuck and also like again yeah i used to view drag as such this like weird crazy covert thing when really it's like yeah we're all doing drag all the time so if anything i feel like i'm just like okay like now i finally get it now i'm finally like just doing what everyone else is doing now you know so yeah so you've um, well, we're, gonna, we're hopefully going to try and do some pitches later, aren't we? Because you're 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 going to be um, parties around later on, right? So what what is it you're up to later on today? Um, later on today, um, I am speaking to um, like uh, like a group of like four hundred people, and so I'll get to do that in full drag, which will be super fun. Um, and then I'm volunteering uh, in the evening, speaking to a group of university students. So. Um, yeah, it'll be like a really good fun day and I'll get to 
get in full drag, which means I start three hours of makeup after this. So here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks so much for doing it. I really, really enjoyed that. That was really great. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Matt, thank you for having me. I mean, if I can leave your listeners with anything, I would just say like, God, use the outdoors as not use be in the outdoors as a space where you can just like be yourself. And the more you're able to be yourself and be who you are, it's just, it'll unlock a new world in your life. And I think the people around you will just start, um, will start being even more themselves. And then you can like take fucking action and do shit and like stand for something and know what you believe in. And like, that is so fucking needed right now. So thank you to the British that listen and to the other people around the world that listen to this. Thank you, Matt, for having me. I really appreciate it. So there you go. That was me and Wynn chatting. Patty, hope you enjoyed it. What an absolute legend, eh? And I hope you took as much away from that conversation as I did. These topics are still rare territory for our little world. And I salute the leadership, playfulness, humor, and thoughtfulness with which Wynn is tackling them through the persona of Patty. Definitely go and check it out on Instagram. It's Patagonia, I believe, is the uh, the address, but you'll you'll find it, you know, I'm sure. All right, housekeeping corner, which as the regulars will know, where the fly by nights, the gadabouts, the part timers. You know, the newcomers leave. I steal Ben Mundy's gag and say, thank fuck, they've gone. And it's just us, the regulars, the barflies, the diehards, the last people in the kitchen amidst that sea of empty bottles. We're the only ones here. So if that's you, then welcome and I salute you. So as usual, I've had a few things going on. One of which has been very intriguing indeed, actually. Now, you might have heard of the Natural Selection Tour which has been created by Travis Rice and which launches in January 2021, which is like next week or something. It might be February. Anyway, early 2021. It's a three-stop freeriding-based tour, which calls in at Jackson Hole, Bald Faced and Alaska, which is going to bring together the best male and female snowboarders in the world to compete on three specially designed courses. It is essentially Travis Rice's vision for what competitive snowboarding should look like and it's aimed at crowding the best all-round snowboarders in the world anyway i'm honored that travis asked me to sit on the five person selection panel to help choose the riders for the inaugural tour they were looking for some european input to make sure the whole thing wasn't too us centric and they asked me if i'd be up for helping out now obviously i said yes they did have to twist my arm a little bit i'm going to be honest but i did say yes and it's been an honor and a privilege to help shape in some small way one of the most important events in snowboarding history. The panel is uh, Travis, event organiser, Liam Griffin, Pat Bridges, Barrett Christie and me, randomly enough. I think the first round of rider announcements will probably have been made by the time this comes out. And I'm also lining up Travis to come on the show so we can chat about the whole project in detail. He has been on before, but it was a bit rushed. So I'm looking forward to getting him back on again and chatting about all this. So yeah, what with that and the book and the old day job, it's been a busy few weeks. Good job. There's fuck all else to do right now, given that we're uh, back on lockdown here in the UK. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the episode, it's a short housekeeping corner this week and you want to support what I do, you can leave a review. You can post about it on social. You can sign up to my newsletter through the website, all the rest of it. Or you could just tell a mate, get them to have a listen. Not said that for a while, have I? I'll be back next week. Thanks for listening. Nice one.